Welcome back to MSNBC Live. I'm Carlos Watson. Now, as President Obama's approval rating slip and health care reform hangs in the balance, some are already predicting a midterm election disaster for Democrats. And just how bad could 2010 be for the Democratic Party? Joining us now is Charlie Cook, MSNBC political analyst and editor of the Cook Political Report. Also joining us is Republican strategist Doug High. Charlie, I'm going to start with you. Uh, you predicted earlier that while some of your numbers suggest that Democrats could lose 6 to 12 seats in the midterm elections, your gut and some anecdotal evidence was telling you it could be much worse. Say more about that. Well, Carlos, it, it, after picking up 54 seats in the last two elections, it's almost impossible for Democrats not to lose some seats. And 6 to 12, when we do it race by race, that's what we kind of come up with. But when you start s stepping back and looking at the broader dynamics, you look at how this majority got put together with independents swinging enormously towards Democrats back in that 06 election when they took the House. And you look at the turnout dynamics that Democrats enjoyed in 08 with a lot of new voters and voters that are not likely to show up in the midterm election. You look at the Democratic Party's favorable ratings dropping down, not quite as low as Republicans, but really dropping. Uh, looking at a lot of dynamics that are starting to resemble uh, the kind of uh, dynamics we saw in the er early in the 1994 cycle. And um, I, I think we're just starting the feel of it, the intensity of opposition uh, and animosity that's out there. It's starting to, you know, we're getting that deja vu feeling all over again. Charlie, that is a lot different than uh, the conversation we had at the DNC uh, after the, the uh, elections in 2006. So I was very saddened uh, to uh, read your assessment of things. But it seems like, Doug, I want to ask you, you know, the contours really of 2010 are sort of already being formed. We're hearing Republicans starting on the mantra that, you know, Democrats control everything and they can't get anything done. And Democrats are trying to make the case that Republicans are being obstructionist. So what do you, I mean, what is the challenge here for Republicans? Do they risk maybe overreaching? Well, I don't think you can overreach when you're uh, in, in, the, in the minority and uh, have a filibuster-proof Senate. Uh, but, but speaking to the contours, I look at my home state of North Carolina. Uh, what Barack Obama did in 2008 was tremendous. He really turned the, the old North Carolina model on, on its head. Uh, Democrats traditionally had ran uh, against the, uh, the party that was running for pre the, the Democrat candidates for president, whether it was John Kerry and John Edwards, uh, Al Gore. You know, I remember being 12 years old on my school bus in 1984 asking people if they were Reagan conservatives and Mondale liberals. Uh, it might be why I didn't have many friends uh, in grade school, but really speaks to uh, how potent uh, Republican candidates for president were in North Carolina. Obama turned that on its head, but his numbers are slipping. That's one thing that Richard Burr has a, has a real advantage on uh, in his Senate race. But Doug, isn't there a danger, you know, here you've got the Republicans coming out very strongly against uh, the president's agenda, and at a point, don't they need to put forward some ideas of their own? I mean, don't they, and when I say overreaching, I guess it seems like there's a point at which all the negativism, all the no, uh, could backfire. Well, absolutely they need to pour, put forth ideas. I'll, I'll mention my old boss, Senator Richard Burr, again. Uh, he's introduced uh, health care reform legislation with Tom Coburn. Uh, Paul Ryan and uh, uh, Kevin McCarthy from California have introduced it as well. It's important to put forth ideas, and they certainly certainly have. Uh, but the numbers that are slipping with independents are critical. But what uh, Charlie are wrote ideas? last week, Democrats are in a free fall, and I think that's true. Hey, hey Charlie, I, I want to put the last question to you. We only have about a minute here. Where are we likely to see some surprises. Give me three or four canaries in the coal mine to watch that if these races go one way or another, uh, they'll signal whether uh, uh, Democrats are uh, in good shape or, you know, or facing a real tsunami. And give us some hope, Charlie. <laughs> well, let's, I mean, first of all, I would disagree with both of you that uh, midterm elections aren't about the party out of power. They're about the party in power. There is a referendum on the, the president and the party in power. So uh, Republicans have to come up with ideas by 2000. 12, but not for 2010. But I would say, look this fall. I mean, in Virginia, Democrats had an excellent chance of holding on to the Virginia governor's race. Now, uh, not so much. Uh, Democrats were on a roll in special elections. Now we've got one coming up in the 23rd District of New York that's going to be this fall that uh, looks fairly doubtful that Democrats will be able to pick that up. And the New Jersey governor's race, while there's been some signs of life the last few days, there was a pretty, still a pretty good chance the Democrats lose that. Democrats come up 0 for three this fall. There are your canaries in the coal mine. And let's not forget, Harry Reid just had a poll released yesterday in Las Vegas by the new, uh, Las Vegas uh, Review Journal that had uh, him at points, down 11 points to Danny Tarkanian. That's really significant. Hey guys, we're going to keep our eyes on, keep our eye on it. Charlie Cook, Doug High, thank you both for joining us. Thank you.